first started making a cigar back in 1984, I really knew nothing, apart from what I had read about Chateau de Pop and the couple of visits I'd made. And they felt strongly that Grenache is, is called an oxidative grape variety. It doesn't need a lot of oxygen, and you really kind of want to protect it, just like you, like you do Pinot Noir. So typically, Grenache would, would never go into a small barrel, and would never go into a new barrel. So it would a, be aged in either ovals or large wood tanks like this. But what we, have, what we have figured out is as our grapes have gotten better, as we've gotten more skilled, we can actually get by with some smaller cooperage. In other words, the wine has to have sufficient structure to tolerate um, that amount of oxygen exchange. Otherwise, it kind of destroys it. So it's kind of a judgment call. If you have it, it's great. If you don't have it, it's just it's going to kill it. So what we've pretty much worked out very, very well we do half of it in these up tank, upright tanks and half of it in the pun in punchings, which are double sized barrels. That works extremely this well. This is a cooler, cooler vineyard. So uh, the other one, I believe we had to add a little bit of acid to keep it balanced. This one we did not acidulate at all. In other words, it's like the old joke, you know, doctor, I broke my leg in three places. What should I do? You know, stay out of those places. <laughs> if you have to fix the wine, you're probably better off staying out of those places. If, if the wine's balanced, and it doesn't need to be manipulated, but there's a good chance that it's, that's the right grapes are being grown there. This is the same wine in, uh, that has been aged in punchins. Same wine. Blue. About half a percent residual sugar. It's in a home stretch. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The other one was a week, and this is... This has been in longer. This, this is about another... This fermented a little faster. So we're going to do 01 through 07, six vintages, we'll just do three at a time when they're bottled with Stelvin. So the wines don't show very well for the first year or two. The other side of it is they actually will age much, much longer and will just, I think, conserve just much, much better. But they're, they're mildly retarded when they're young. <laughs> Things that are... Wines are totally absent, these so-called funky compounds, they're very simple. Too much, and it's, and it's over the top. Just at the right threshold levels, it adds complexity. If a wine tends to stink, that actually means the wine has life force, and it's capable of aging. So it's a paradox. If the wine is totally clean, probably it's not going to live forever. Yeah. You know, it'll leave a beautiful corpse, but it's not going to live very long. <laughs> You know, the Dugapi uh, Burgundies, totally reek. They totally reek for the first six or seven years. 05 Burgundies, the red Burgundies, if you've drunk any 05 Burgundies, they're disgusting right now. That's good. <laughs> Get slightly referential, but not in a kind of ironic way, not in a not sort of co copycat sort of way. So in other words, Forgive me, in Napa, for example, many of the wineries call themselves Domain, Tonka Shows, or Chateau, something, something. And it, it always seems forced. It always seems like they're trying too hard. So I, but I wanted to have an homage to the French, but have this kind of funny, ironic twist. So I read about this goofy law in Chateauneuf that prohibited the landing of flying saucers and flying cigars. And that seemed like a an interesting way of linking it, memorable, re referring to the French, but also kind of having a little ironic sure. commentary. <laughs> it's, it's good. It worked.